weeks ago, I was asked by CNN to discuss the significant impact that student loan debt has on millions of people in the United States. CNN found me because of my involvement with Facing Student Loans, Sentenced to Debt, an empirical sociological research project headed by my friend and colleague, Dr. Beverly Yen Thompson, that asked the question, how are Americans dealing with their student loans? I was honored and excited to be able to talk about the impact on a national forum of student loan debt on people's individual lives. As you may have guessed, the five minute segment wasn't nearly enough time to truly convey some of my own thoughts on the macro and micro dimensions of this pervasive issue. I want to share a few points on this topic to consider the most important issue being that thousands, if not millions of people each year do not enroll in programs of higher education, not because they lack the intellectual capital, but because they fear the debt that may and often will be accrued as a result of becoming educated. Couple that with the challenges of securing an income that will not only meet your living expenses, but also allow you to pay your student loan debt for 25 to 30 years after you've graduated. That is a serious commitment with a length far greater than the average friendship, relationship, occupational duration, or even marriage. Often this untapped potential lies in the lower and working classes, where immediate employment is not often preferred, or is actually often preferred over years of schooling, of which there is, of course, no guarantees for a job when you get out. What does this say then about the often overlooked social stratification system that continues to reproduce itself. It says that knowledge acquisition is still a privilege as opposed to a right. I personally work with youth both as an executive director of a nonprofit youth development foundation and as a part-time sociology professor. I frequently discuss career goals and what the future looks like, and many young people are adjusting their dreams in accordance with the money necessary to finance those dreams. One such young lady who is entering college this fall desperately wants to be a doctor, but has decided instead to pursue nursing because she does not have the money or the means to get the MD degree. How sad that her ambitions have been stopped in their tracks to avoid inevitable loan debt. When we discuss reform, we must not only take into account the debt that people currently struggle with, but the impact that it has on the very future decisions of those who would ultimately impact the most. Thanks for listening.